Hello everyone and welcome! I'm super glad to welcome you back at my channel after four months of not seeing each other and there was a reason for that, which I will explain a bit later. For everyone who is new to my channel, thank you and welcome and I hope you would like it, so do not hesitate to subscribe. And here we usually talk about critical thinking, semiotics and other very useful signs for our life. As I already said before, I'm super glad to welcome you here and share with you some fantastic news. I got into PhD program, so now you can call me a PhD student. And here we are located at my new working table, which was constructed thanks to the IKEA instructions and productions. And here I probably will spend my first semester of PhD thanks for the 2020 coronavirus. However, as you might already understand from the title of this video, today I would like to share with you some information about my PhD journey. And this would majorly relate to my journey of getting into PhD, even if majority of you probably know that it's just the very beginning of an academic career. So, just to give you a little bit of a background and to share some tips which I may suggest to someone who is about to pursue academic career through PhD, I will tell you my little story. As you might get from my accent, I am Russian. Yes, I was born in Ukraine and grown in Russia. I went to Russian school, local school of the town where I used to live and where my parents still live. It's called Buturlinovka. Well, I'm not sure you would easily find it on the map, but I'm really glad to provide you with some handful material. So, as you may understand, that's a quite little town where I graduated my high school and obviously my ambitions were already big back then, so I applied for the Moscow State University, which is one of the most known and well-recognized universities in Russia. But for good or bad, I didn't get in. But I got in Voronezh State University, which is also great government uh, university in Russia. I'm not sure if the word government, probably state university, that would be more correct. And there I was studying journalism. But for good I went for exchange program to University of Tartu on my fourth year of uh, studies, which supposed to be second part of specialist degree, which known in Russia as a degree <laughs> integrating bachelor and master together. After I graduated journalism, I was working for a while as a journalist in a local newspaper in Voronezh, but still persuading a dream to continue my studies. And I was happy enough being enrolled to University of Tartu for the program in semiotics, where I spent two amazing years studying semiotics and researching. After I graduated University of Tartu in 2016, I did not think about going into PhD right away. I did want to contribute to different spheres with my semiotic knowledge. But a little after, I realized that I cannot just live without academia and I started my journey into PhD. And if your dream is to get PhD or study PhD and you already started your application process, you may know that it can be sometimes complicated, challenging, and I'm here to tell you that there is actually no secret how to get PhD, but I will share with you some my experience, which probably can be useful. So I was applying to several universities, mainly in Italy and some universities abroad. Obviously, my goal was to get into Italian university. And I have to say that 
there is different specifics for different countries. For example, if you are trying to get to American University, you know that you have to pass TOEFL and also some GRE exam. For example, for European universities, it works a bit differently. And for example, if you hold your previous degree in English, you don't have to have a proof of your knowledge of English, but also you will write Oh, you probably will write your PhD proposal in English, so it would make it clear what is your level of knowledge of the language. I would say there are actually three main advices which I would give to a person who is struggling of getting PhD position. Or maybe not struggling, just trying. <laughs> so the first one related to your PhD proposal. Yes, PhD proposal is a super important part of your enrollment because this is your proposal of the project you plan to work on during your three or four years of PhD research. And it is super necessary to present it in a very clear way. If you don't have much background of academical writing, you can always Google and there are several universities which even provide the structure which you should follow while writing your PhD proposal. If you don't know which structure you should follow, and here I'm obviously talking about humanities and social sciences, because I believe for you guys from mass in physics, you definitely have something other in mind and it works probably a bit differently for you. But if you don't know how to structure your PhD proposal, I will leave some instructions below with a link, so you will be completely armed. Why following certain structure for your PhD proposal is important? It gives clarity to your ideas and also it's cut away all the unnecessary things, so you don't have to overwrite it. You just need to be precise, structured and present your ideas in the most clear way. Actually, good idea is to give your research proposal to someone else who is understanding about academia and ask if it's clear enough. If something remains unclear, then you always have chance to correct it before the submission. Second advice would relate to topic of your PhD proposal or topic of your research topic of your interest, <laughs> definitely research about your future potential supervisor. Read his papers and understand how they match with what you're planning to do. Actually, it is super important that you understand your topic and you do this preliminary research to understand what is already done. Obviously, you will have a lot of time during the first year of research to find all the papers and all the works which already dedicated to this particular problem. But you have to be aware of how much your interests match with the university. I know that sometimes students are aiming to get a position no matter what, because of the name of their university or just because they think it's the best chance. But your university should match your interests. You should be, you know, like a perfect match, <laughs> a perfect couple. And that's why it's important to do background research about your supervisor, about the university, of the potential labs where you may work, and also how relevant is your topic for this kind of environment. The third advice which I would give to everyone who is really there to get PhD position is to write papers and trying to publish them. Obviously, being published would give you a lot of benefits in comparison to those who didn't publish yet. And obviously, you should try to publish on the topic which you are planning to research. Even though nowadays many researchers are multidisciplinary, so you definitely should not hesitate to research on something which interests you genuinely, and that definitely would be a positive part. And the last one, but not least, let's say advice three and a half. Your research topic should sell. 
What does it mean? It should be interesting and addressing current problems. So I would suggest not just to go very vogue about what is the meaning of Nabokov literature for... If you are aiming to get uh, full funding for your research, your research should be applicable here and now for the problems which society struggles today. And trust me, we have a lot of problems which have to be solved. And sometimes even with the good new brains. <laughs> but what about my research? Our research on how artificial intelligence suggestions can influence our human decision-making and cognition in general. And I believe that after Social Dilemma came out on Netflix and uh, got so big resonance in uh, society, it's definitely not a secret to anyone anymore that there is an influence. Even though I will be more specific researching it from the semiotic point of view, and as you know, semiotics study how we communicate, how we exchange information, and how we interpret it. By the way, it's not precise definition of semiotics. Precise definition of semiotics you can find here. According to the father of pragmatism, Charles Sanders Pierce, semiotics is something that stands for something. And to I someone plan to research this topic from a point of view which considers all the informational flows which go on in our bodies. For example, while scrolling social media, you see all your friends which trying to create image of their successful life and probably scale up on a social hierarchy. According to neuroscience and biological research, we cannot avoid this idea of social hierarchy, we, like having inner trigger inside. And we actually have not just feelings about it, our brain perceive hierarchy, especially when we are down than someone, as a real punch into the face. Interestingly, also all the stress we get from social networks actually can be double or triple thanks for the suggestions. All this makes sense and do really matter. So that's exactly what I will research about. But I will talk about it in another video. So if I manage to get your attention to my research, please let's stay in touch and I will tell you much more about my PhD experience. And I would be very happy to share with you it on all the stages. So let's keep in touch here or on Instagram. And I'm also very curious to know what's going on in your life. So let's have a live conversation because as I always say, I'm here here for the dialogue, not for monologue. Stay safe and see you in the next one. May semiotics be with you.